All right, so this is gonna be a pretty rough and ready video. Uh, and the purpose here is to take your CLT building, which I believe your objective is to make this, this building compliant. And particularly we're looking at the fire stairs. Now this is pretty realistic to be honest in terms of the workflow. This is not uncommon at all to receive a model that you have had nothing to do with and need to amend it uh, or need to coordinate around what's being done, whether it be within the office or it might be from an external consultant. So this recording is going to be quite unstructured. I have no real plan of attack here other than the typical workflow that I would use. So I'm gonna, I've never seen this model before. I've never opened it up. Um, I've never used this model before. So you're gonna walk through it with me. We're gonna open it up, um, break it apart, explore how it's been put together because every modeler is slightly different. And then we're going to amend it or amend one of the floors and then importantly look at the cause, the cause and effect on subsequent floors above and below. From there, we'll amend the model, stick it back together, ready for submission. Okay, so let's get started. All right, first things first, let's take a look at what we're working with here. So I've downloaded the CLT set of drawings for this model. And uh, what we're gonna look at first is just what drawings we've got to work with. So I can see here, it looks like mm, this file says site plan which is interesting because it is definitely showing a little bit of the site, but it's also predominantly the ground floor, but it's also not quite a general arrangements plan either. So we can see, mm, we can see that there's a fire stair here. These are concrete because on the ground floor, there's an exit out to the side lane as well, which is a little bit interesting. Uh, I think that's the side lane. Um, whoops. But what I will do is we'll go up to here. So this looks like a generic floor plan. So I'm not sure when this floor plan occurs or how much it changes throughout the different levels. Um, but this is probably where I would start because these, these floors are more convoluted and there's more impact. So there's no doubt that looking at this already, that the stairs are not quite correct depending on where we are. There's a few things to consider here. So. The stair, the, the actual handrails are not right. I think, I believe that you need to have a handrail in the middle that wraps around like so, and continues to wrap around. I suggest that we stick with the CLT panel in the center, and we'll work out what that thickness looks like in a second. We've got to have handrails on the outside of the, of the floor as well, and the handrails may go from here around up, and they may stop there, uh, in some instances, they can come up and around as well, but I would suggest they just terminate at the end of the top of the of the stair. It's a little bit indifferent, really, because you do have the handrail on the inside as well. The other thing to consider is just the gaps between these. So, uh, and the real impact is what happens in here, here, and here, and a little bit in here. So these are what you would call service risers and you know all service cupboards so chances are these two cupboards here are probably electrical risers or comms risers um, or they could even be like fire cupboards as well like um, fire hose sprinklers or the fire hose reels in here you'll have high pressure pipes running through here uh, and then these two here are probably more likely to be uh, HVAC and um, storm water and sewage and supply water supply etc so these will have some sort of impact and you know this is why coordination so early on is so critical realistically when i look at these bathrooms down here what do we have to work with i can see two cupboards on either side i can see what is i'm going to guess are two showers i would say they are but the gap in terms of their distance, they don't look very wide at all. So I'm not sure if I would wanna be crushing those down anymore. And I guess you can see the service rises here for those, for, um, for your plumbing systems in the bathroom. So there is more that you could do. Like obviously we could push these walls all down. Um, so the bathroom starts around here and then they finish further down here. So in other words, you decrease the size of your bedroom. That's one option especially if you want to keep the bathroom at the same size. But we're really going to limit the scope of our work here uh, to be a little bit more limited. Um, so what we're going to work on really is just the fire stair. Whatever the consequences to the apartment, to the apartments, is not really the topic of this tutorial or this, um, 
this workshop. It's really about the fire stair and the fire stair only. So what I've done is I've actually pulled up a vintage set of stairs that I did way back when. And let's reference these in terms of their sizes and things that we could probably learn from as well. So first things first, there's a void here in this set of stairs and that's fine. For us, we've got a CLT panel. Secondly, you'll notice that this is concrete as well and that's fine too. We can, doesn't really matter in that regard. The construction is still the same. So we've got our TGSIs that sit here. We've got one stair, or I think it's um, 250, sorry, 300 mil before the uh, the steps. So the TGI, so you've got 300 mil for the TGI, 300 mil for the first step, and then 250 for the steps thereafter. We have handrails on the inside and the outside, and I believe in this instance, the handrails are 50 mil. And so when we look at what we're going to have to do, it's gonna be something along these lines. So you're gonna to need to have 50 mil gap between the wall and the back of the handrail. You have 50 mil for the width of the handrail itself. In this instance, we had a thousand or one meter between the handrails. I gotta be honest, that's probably a risky move because a couple of millimeters below that and this whole stair will be deemed non-compliant. For the sake of construction tolerance, I would suggest that we make that number more like 1050. You have 50 mil for the handrail, 50 mil for the back of the handrail, which is back here. And then the width of the the core, or in this case, it's a void, but in our case, it's gonna be a, a CLT panel. And that's consistent, that's, that's converted again to the other side. Now, one thing that I wanted to show you in here, because it's kind of hard to visualize otherwise, is this scenario here. So you come up these stairs. In fact, it might be better if I show you in the first floor plan, because now we're looking at the stairs in plan view. So we come up from stair one to stair 12. We come around the other side of the landing and you'll notice where stair 12 ends here is not where stair 13 begins. There's actually a whole step that's just you know at the same level as the landing. So that's another 250 mil. Then the stair starts rising from 13 through to 23 in this scenario. Now the number of the stairs gonna change because we don't know what the floor to floor height is in this scenario. And here the stair does not continue. So the landing just, ends here. So we'll do something quite similar to this. I think the biggest challenge is probably going to be the consequences of what happens everywhere else, as well as probably the handrail. The handrail will probably give us the most amount of grief. They always do. So I'd suggest that what we do is open up the model and then go from there. Look at this in components. Look at this firstly in terms of clearances, in terms of total clearance of the stair, then look at the stair construction, then look at it uh, from uh, the TGSIs, then look at, um, at the handrail inside, then outside, and then look at what the consequence is, is going up and down the levels. So let's open up the Revit model and go from there. All right, we've Revit 2024 open. I'm just gonna click and drag the file and open it up. And now the file was originally in Revit 2022, and now it's got to update to Revit 24. I'm not sure which version you've been told to use, but it doesn't really matter. If it's 22, it will open. If it's beyond that, it's gonna upgrade. If it's under 22, you won't be able to open it, but I don't think that's gonna be the case for most people. So I'll wait for that to upgrade, and then we'll see what we've got to work with. All right, now I've got the model open, it's updated. Uh, let's take a look at the 3D view. And something looks very odd. Everything's sort of transparent. I'm not sure why you'd want that. And if this is happening to you as well, then let's see if we can sort this out. Okay, so let's go to graphic overlay. I'll go to here, uh, straight away. Hidden line mode and transparency set at 20. So I'm gonna put that back to zero, hit apply. Now the model is not transparent. And I'm gonna change this to shaded mode as well. And we've got something that looks like this now, not too bad. This is pretty common when you, again, when you open up other people's models, you have no idea how they've put them together, uh, including the visual styles as well. All right, so let's take a look through these. I can see here in the in the floor plans, I'm gonna, I'm gonna collapse structural. In floor plans, we have level three generic, ground is zero, level one is podium, three generic, eight is roof and the site plan and level one basement. So. I'm gonna take a guess and anything with a, anything that's in parentheses is probably one of the drawings that we were looking at on the sheet before. So let's go to generic. Yeah, that looks pretty, that looks pretty interesting. Let's go to like 
Level 8. Mm, okay, there's not much going on up there. The site plan is the drawing that we saw before. What about the podium? Yeah, okay, so the podium... Doesn't look overly different, but that's okay. What about the ground? Yeah, okay, so there's definitely a big difference there in the ground. And importantly, is the structure. So I can see concrete 230 wall. In the middle, they've got a concrete 94 mil wall. That's odd. Why would it be 94, not just 100? Um, I think we work with the generic. Plus, I get the feeling this is the floor they wanted to use the most because, well, there's furniture in these ones. There's no furniture in any other floor. So this is level three. And I want to double check that it is. Just because it says it's level three up here does not actually mean it is. So I'm looking in the floor plan properties. I've got nothing selected. And I can see that the associated level to this view is level three, which is good. That's fine. So let's go back to the 3D view and I'm gonna take the section box that's already here and I'm gonna cut this back to level three. So ground, podium, one, two, and three. So it's the next one down. Okay, and then I'm gonna drag this up. Something like that. And now we're on level three. All right, so pretty interesting here. There's already a lot of things going on that I can see. So I'm going to make this box a little bit smaller. I'm not going to cut back the building yet, but the section box is a great tool. All right. Now it looks like as I'm just hovering around the model, you notice as you're hovering around, you're going to get like these things appearing. So you get like these things that look like columns. They're shafts. They're shaft openings. So a shaft opening is when you draw a floor and then you want to punch holes in it that are consecutive, like for floor after floor. When essentially you can't be bothered drawing a floor with the same openings in it, you use the shaft tool, which there's nothing inherently wrong with that at all. And, for, you, you, and it just makes it easier because that way you know that the same penetrations on level one are the same ones on levels five that they are on level 10, etc. And then whenever they change, you just change that level. So you can see here in the constraints, when I when I click on them, the base constraint is level one and it's minus 500. That makes sense because you want to make sure it's going through that level's floor per se. Remember that the level starts at the top of that surface of the floor. So if you want to go under the floor and actually penetrate level one, it needs to be level one minus a value. Then up to level eight, so it's going all the way up to the roof and minus 500 again. I'm not sure why that's the case in that room. Oh, that makes sense because they want it to go up to the roof but not penetrate the actual roof structure itself. That does make sense. Okay, but I can see... So that what's interesting here is that if we look at this in plan view and let's turn this around so it looks like the floor plan, we can see everything that's highlighted in blue is the penetrations and the penetrations are fine but they're not for the rises so there's nothing in these two rises here there's nothing in the cupboards which is fine as well but it's just good to know what we're playing with there is separate shafts by the look of it for those rises so when i click on that you can see another set of shaft openings and they're like this so this means that we have to remember that as we edit this area we're going to have to amend that shaft opening because we're probably going to get a few errors and some stuff that looks weird if we don't the alternative is just to delete it and in fact, I'll show you what happens. If I delete it, why can't I delete it? There we go. Yeah, nothing really happens. There's still holes in the floor. Now that's super weird. Why bother having a shaft if you're not actually penetrating the floor? Hmm. Okay. I'm going to bring them back and I'm not going to do anything for now. Let's just keep working away. There is a shaft as well for the whole staircase which is interesting again. And just to sort of show you exactly what this looks like, I'm just gonna go file, new project, just a new architectural project. And I'm just gonna very quickly show you what this looks like. So I'm gonna to go to a uh, elevation and I've got two levels here, level one, level two. I'm just going to copy this a few times so I'm going to go like four meters high oh, not 400 four, four meters they are or even three and I'm going to make say 10 no oh, that's not what I want one more time AR. I want to go to the second one not to the last one 
and move three meters. And now I'll do 10 and I'll go 10 from there. Okay, so I got something that looks like this, 10 levels. I'm gonna go draw a floor now. I don't care what, it's just for demonstrating purposes. And I'm just gonna go, okay, that's my floor. And my floor might even have like a curve like this. I don't know, that's my floor plate. I'll go okay, and I'll make this just a generic floor. So I'll go to 3D, and there's my floor. Looks like some sort of concrete floor. And I'm gonna go copy, and then I'm going to go modify, paste, align to selected levels, and I'm gonna go from level one to level 10, like that. Okay, so now I've got floors on every single level. Now, this would be a real pain if I had to come to here and go edit boundary, and then I go, Oop, well, I've got a riser over here and I might have a, another riser there and another one like that so for a couple of pipes. Oops, and I'm gonna say, okay. And now when I go to 3D, you'll see on that floor, I've got those penetrations there and the shaft, uh, sorry, in the riser, but nothing on the other floor. Now, of course, I could just go double click. I could highlight that, I could copy that. Then I could go, okay. Then I could double click on this one I go copy, uh, paste. Oh, I have to go to a floor plan to do it. It's not even worth my time. It's just way too slow. You can see already now like how tedious that would be to do it again and again. So this time let's go to ground floor or level zero in this uh, template file. And I'm gonna go architecture and then we're going to go shaft. So the shaft tool. All right, and now you'll see this works much like what you saw before. So I'll make a riser over here. I'll make another one right. I'll make another one slightly next to it, a smaller one. And then I'll do a couple of like pipe ones. I don't know, something like that. The base constraint is level zero minus 150. So let's go minus 500. And at the moment it's unconnected, but let's just say I'm gonna put up to level one and that's it. No offset at all. I'll say, okay, I go back to my 3D and you can see now I've got my shaft here and you can see what that looks like. See what my shaft that comes up to level one, but it's, it's going to equal to level one. So if I change this like top offset to minus 500, watch what happens. It goes just below that floor, okay? Or alternatively, I can just click this grip tool and I can just go whoop the whole way up the building. And there's my shaft tool cutting through every single floor. So, so much easier to manage services going through floors, especially when you have to change them frequently on the run. Now, that's still not the right way I've done it. What I've done is I've gone from level zero up to level one with a top offset of like 30 meters, essentially up to level one plus 30 meters. That's not the right way to do it. Should just be zero. And I'll go up to level 10 like so, okay? That's the appropriate way to do it. And if I didn't want it to go through the top one, because let's say the top one was the um, the final, like the roof, then what I would do, really what I should do is just change it to be one level below, like so. So there's my roof structure, there's my penetrations for every other floor in the building. Now this works the same, whether it's penetrations for services or whether it's like this for a staircase as well, okay? So with that demonstration out of the way, let's go back to the model and let's look at a few other things. The other thing I noticed is that the stair core walls are modeled. So there's a model group CLT shaft stair level two to level seven. Therefore, if I go to the podium, let's see what happens. If I go to here, here's another model group and I click on that and you can see here, model group CLT shaft stair one. They've also done it as well for the lift shaft. So grouping, walls together. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. Uh, in fact, it will make our life a little bit easier to change, but it's just understanding how the groups work together. So there's clearly a difference, and I can even see it here. There's a difference between this stair shaft, this stair shaft on level one, and if I put level, uh, level three, which is the generic. So remember this stair shaft is from level two to level seven, but level three is the generic. I can straight away see that this is slightly different to the other one. I think there's a bit of a difference in the wall thickness here. And I think there's a bit of a difference in the core, uh, sorry, the thickness or the width of these fire cupboards. Now, because level three is the most common, it's the one we're gonna work with and then worry about the consequential uh, effects on level 
ground one and that's pretty much it oh, and the basement as well but this tutorial is going to be fixing the one that's probably most complicated which is level one oh sorry which is level three or two to seven because it's the most amount of stairs so they've just copied and pasted this on every single floor therefore watch what happens so if i go let's just go to like level six as an example here's that stair core i'm going to double click into it here's my stair groups or here's my core my core wall groups and let's just say i delete this wall this door okay i'll go okay it's going to take a second because it's updating all the other instances and if i go back to level three there's no door there anymore so yeah pretty simple i mean you guys know the concept of a group all right so what else do i have to look at now the other one is probably the stair itself so what I'll do is again, I'm gonna show you in a example file because I think it's probably the best way to do it. I'm gonna go back to this example file and I'm gonna draw just a dodgy stair. Okay, I have no idea what stair this is. Let's just go, I don't know, a concrete stair. We're gonna go from level zero to level one or ground floor to level one. And I'm just gonna do something very simple. I'm just gonna go from like here, uh, I've got nine rises, 11, 14. To, 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 to. I'm gonna do something like this and then come across to here and do something like that okay so there's a stair there uh, i should probably move that back something like that i'm going to go to my 3d view and there's my stair there now these are pretty big so that's four meters so from ground up to level one there's no shaft there yet that's fine and uh, that will do for now the other thing we're going to do is let's edit this so uh, right, so I'm just gonna go like this and I'm just gonna draw a boundary around the outside of this stair, like so, something like that. I'll go okay, go back to my 3D and there's my opening for my stairwell, something like that. And I'll bring this back to there, uh, like so. Okay, now what's important to know is that this stair is going from one level to another the start the base level of the stair is one level and then the top level is just one level up now what you can do and i've never seen this work actually properly it, it rarely ever works because there's always slight discrepancies across different levels even if you intend them to be the same height it usually is just easier to do your stairs right once and then just copy them across and then change them on a bespoke basis. So let's do that stair again, but this time watch this. I'm gonna go stair and I'm gonna go starting at ground level, so level zero. This time I'm gonna go up to like say level four, all right? And then what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go back to here. I'm gonna put my run to, that was left, center. Let's go right this time. So I'm gonna do something like this. I go from here. So notice now it says 13 rises created, 64 remaining. So I'm gonna go up to, I don't know, 12 and then come across and then go up and then across. Oops, I need to go here, across. Then up then across then up. Oh shit, one more. Oh, I think I've cooked it across <laughs> i think i've actually cooked it and there i like let's just go to that okay the stairs incomplete but it proves the point so you see what i've done there oh yeah it's a little bit weird but you can see what i've done there is i've essentially drawn the stairs it looks like i've just been tracing over myself in one floor plan but i've drawn all the stairs so i click on this it's like oh sweet i've got all the stairs for the building and i could go all the way up to level 10 but you can easily see how you can get lost very quickly, especially if you're taking the time to work your handrails. Like notice these handrails are just one continuous handrail. Now that might work in some instances, but uh, rarely, rarely it works. You wanna just do it right on one stair and then just copy them across. So with that in mind, let's go back to this project and let's see how these stairs are constructed. So I reckon I might be surprised here. So to me, it looks like these are just from one level to another, level four to level five. I am going to create another. I'm going to go duplicate this view with detailing. So I'm gonna create a second view, which is exactly the same. Uh, but I need to have my, hmm, that's not exactly the same at all. Hmm. Let's do this again. I'm gonna go delete. 
Ah, okay, sorry, wrong view. The 3D one, duplicate view with detailing should be exactly the same, which it is. And now I'm going to cut this back towards the stairs. I'm going to do something like this. So I've got a section of the stair. I'm going to drag this back to one door of the apartment, this one to the other door of the apartment, and then this one right to the back of the stairwell. So I've got something that looks like this now. Okay, it's gonna be really frustrating. I'm gonna keep selecting those rises by accident, but there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm gonna drag this down. And we're gonna get a good view of the stairs. So there's a lot of weird stuff going on here, I reckon. So, what's this, what is this wall? Okay, so it's CLT as well, but it's a different wall. I can see these are so, these are kind of weird. Are they, I don't know. Something weird going on. Why are those two walls unfinished and these ones have got like plasterboard on it? Stairs themselves look pretty good. So these are actually a CLT stair that is shown to be notched. And I'm probably gonna, not going to mess with that. The stairs look like they have a splay in them as well, which is pretty good. And remember the splay is this angle you see here where the stair doesn't go straight down. We'll take a closer look at the stair itself, but this stair family, which is called a precast, they've just changed the material of it, which is completely fine. That makes that makes logical sense. We just want to make sure that we, we've got the right sizing. So, but I think the stair itself is pretty good. 180 by 280. Now imagine that 280 is probably the, um, the, the, the going length. 180 will be the height. And then 460 might be the riser times going or something like that whatever that that formula is i can't remember now um that might be what that is but we'll double check but importantly all i wanted to see at the moment is that these are the same stair just copied again and again between them and then adjusted depending on the floor the next one to look at is what is the floor to floor height so let's look at a section and we can see here here's our ground floor so 4.5 meters from ground floor to level one or to the podium, which makes sense. Usually a ground floor height is much higher than 3170 every level thereafter. And that looks like 3170 to not the finished floor level, but the structural level. And the reason why I say that is you can clearly see that this here, this dashed line is going underneath this floor and I reckon if I go to here hmm let's go edit group click on this go edit type go to preview I reckon we're gonna find there's a screed there's an insulation which is yeah okay that's interesting CLT middle CLT rigid plasterboard yeah okay yeah, all right. I see what they've done. It's interesting. They've so they've called the, the basically the top of the CLT panel as the finish as the floor height, but really, your floor height is plus whatever that that thickness is. It's from there to there, so plus fifty mil is actually your finishes level. So every level is like thirty two ten, no, thirty two twenty, is actually your floor finish floor to finish floor height which is interesting. And so where are the CLT stairs finishing? Yeah, okay, so they're finishing above and below. So the top offsets 50 and the base offsets 50. That makes sense because that you've got to finish the stair in alignment with the top of your finish. Now, from a modeling perspective, that is strange. I gotta be honest, that's pretty strange. Normally you'd be modeling your finish floor to finish floor, or you'd be no, you would be denoting your SSL to SSL, but the screed would be making up your finishes zone here. I don't think the screed is making up the finishes zone, which is a little bit odd, but this is all good. This is all, this is fine. At least we know we're starting to get a better idea now of what's actually going on here. Notice we haven't actually modeled anything yet. There's so much prep work to do in this regard, um, just to make sure that we're doing the right thing. And then in terms of the handrails, well, forget it for now. We'll come back to the handrails in a bit. All right, so let's go back to our generic floor. And what we're going to do is I'm going to delete these reference planes. And we're now we're just going to play around with some reference planes and get some sizing for us. So RP for reference plane. 
Now let's say that our starting point is the back of the house, is the back of the apartments. So in other words, the this stairwell is going to grow forwards. So going up the page is going to grow that way. And if it needs to, it's going to grow from right to left, making this riser smaller. You know, we'll bugger the engineers, they can work around it. We'll make it they can they can work for it. So we've got this wall here. I'm gonna go 50 mil offset and I'm just gonna trace over this wall. And I'm gonna do something like this. And straight away we can see, well, that handrail has got a 50 mil clearance. So that's a good start. Then I'm going to go copy 50, that's pretty good. Then we're gonna go again, copy. And this time I'm gonna go 1050. And already we can see, now we can see we're in a little bit of a pickle here. So we're in the middle of the stairwell already. And that's just the clearing for our handrail. Then I'm gonna go copy and I'm gonna go 50 because that's our handrail length, then 50 again, because that's the back of the handrail. So where this cursor is now, right, right here where that line is blue, that is now the core wall. That is where the core wall needs to be, okay? Then that core wall is a thickness of 85 mil, okay? So then we need to go CC, 85, then 50, then 50, then 1050, all right, then 50, and then 50. All right, so this stair is gonna end up dramatically bigger, like dramatically wider. So in other words, let's go into here, and let's just, let's just start breaking stuff. So I'm gonna go edit group, I'm gonna drag this wall, and this wall is gonna come all the way back to there. So now that's the depth of your cupboard. So in other words, your, your riser cupboard is now 160 mil or 15 centimeters, 16 centimeters. <laughs> that is completely useless. Whether before it was, you know, call it half a meter plus the thickness of the wall. So 400 mil. So still shallower than your average wardrobe. Your average wardrobe is going to be somewhere between 450 and 600 deep, probably 550 to 600 deep, you know? So it was already a pretty shallow cupboard. Um, but what we could do is do something like this okay so i'm going to bring this back and now i'm going to strategically grab this wall this wall whoops sorry that wall and that wall and i'm going to grab that wall and i'm going to grab that wall as well why not make oh no no i'm not because that riser can stay that big all right now i don't need to grab the doors because the doors will go where the wall goes because of course the doors are hosted to the wall i'm going to go move i'm going to go from here here all right now we've made everything bigger proportionately so everything still stays relatively the same stairwell is wider okay but the and the cupboards stay the same width but we just dragged everything further out so let's go okay and let's take a look at the damage now it's gonna be a fair bit to move from here so straight away hmm so there's another model group here and this model group is internal finishes or internal fixtures fittings furniture generic now, what's weird is it says nothing about finishes in here, but clearly the timber, t the timber flooring and the tiling is getting selected. So again, another issue here is that the model group is not correctly telling me what's actually in it. And that's important. So I'll go back to our 3D view and you're probably gonna see something that looks like this now. Now this looks okay from here, but we can see the tiling. If I hit the tab, there's the tiling. The tiling now needs to be amended because it's not correct. The Void needs to be amended because it's not correct. And that should be okay. Now, these walls are give, these walls concern me a little bit. Now, I can see there's like a, a, a wall here and a wall here. Now, unless there's some sort of compliance issue, I have no idea why that's there. That, to me, I can see that there might be an idea of some privacy to this door to this door. But this door to that apartment and this door to that apartment are right next to each other. And how much time do you spend in the lobby anyway? So that is very odd. I don't know why you'd design it like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and we're gonna say, okay, model group, internal walls, doors, opposite. No idea what opposite means. We're gonna go click on edit group and I am gonna be rogue and just delete those two. So it looks something like this. That is a much more logical lobby. And we have saved, actually, you know what? Let's just check something. This wall is four square meters and that one's gonna be eight. 
So we've collectively saved over, well, at least conservatively 80 square meters of material, which at a cost of God knows how much per linear meter, we've just saved the builder and your client a lot of money by doing that. So it's a win-win. All right, now, so what we're gonna do now is play around with the flooring. So you'll see everything has a knock-on effect. So model group flooring, I'm gonna go edit group. I'm gonna click on this tile flooring and I'm gonna go back to our floor. Oh, where is it? Uh, finish, let's do it again. There we go. Edit group. There we are. There's our tiling. Double click on that. And let's just move this. These can go because those two are now one and the same. I'll turn on my line weight so you can see what I'm doing there. So what I'm doing here is just deleting that and then going trim and joining those two back up. And we got something that looks like this now. That's a lot better. It's better than what it was. So, okay. Let's go back to our 3D. Now, nothing looks like it's been updated. Go OK. Which level are we on? There's something weird. Oh, we're on level four. That would help, mate. Yeah, Le reference level, level four. Surely, are we actually on level four? Oh, well, it would help if I cut the right floor. Surely not. No, that's right. Yep, yeah, I've just cooked it. That's okay down here there we go okay that's better that's better okay so we can see what we've done much more clearly here now so the tile comes out to here super strange notice how the tile i don't know if you can see this but as i'm rotating the the screen notice the lines are always straight they're always perpendicular at 90 degrees straight up the screen straight to the side of the screen as i rotate around notice it stays like that that is because that is a drafting hatch not a model hatch and I don't like that. So I'm going to change that while I'm here because that's going to give me a headache. So let's go. I need to select this. Now, if I can't select this floor, which I can't at the moment, I'm selecting everything but the damn floor. I'm going to go down to my bottom right-hand side of the screen and I'm going to click on this little icon here. It says select elements by face. Click that so then I won't get a little red cross. Now I can click on this floor. It selects the model group. I'm going to go edit and now I can click on that tile floor and edit the material of that floor. Now, I'm gonna turn that off immediately because trust me that, oh, no, I'm not, I'm gonna do it afterwards because trust me, that will become very annoying later on. So this is a tile, it's 10 mil. I'm gonna go edit type, I'm gonna go edit type. So tile rectangular exterior, I imagine, whatever that means. And I'm gonna change this pattern. Oh, that's a weird pattern. I'm gonna go model pattern and let's go I'm going to use this. I'm going to use block 225 by 450. Why not? Do something a bit different. Oh, I've got a herring bone here. That looks pretty cool. Uh, no, I'm going to do the block. Whatever one you want to use. I don't really care. So, okay. 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 That's better. Now, notice that as I rotate around the screen, it's not updating. And to be honest, I think that's a better looking tile anyway. All right. So, go okay. Now, I need to go on these floor these model uh, internal walls now notice that this model group is internal walls doors generic edit group click one wall click the other wall delete there we go now already i think that's actually a much better functioning lobby all right now next we've moved these walls so technically this will become compliant once i delete this stair or once we edit or redraw the stair this will become a compliant stair in terms of its width now, you can go two ways about this. We can edit the stair or we can just start again. I'm not sure which is the best approach here. So, we'll, we'll experiment with a bit of both. I'm sick of selecting these cores. So, as I'm selecting them in 3D, I'm going to go HH for hide. I'm going to go for this one, HH for temporary hide. Now, they're still there, but at least this means I'm not going to keep selecting it, which is damn frustrating. All right, so what are we looking at here? CLT floor plate. So notice as well, I still have this thing selected where um, I can select elements by face. For now, that's probably uh, not a bad thing, but again, make sure you keep control of it um, so you're not selecting faces willy-nilly because it will become quite frustrating for you. So make sure you have control over that. 
All right. So what is this element? That is a precast stair. That's a part of the stair below. So to me, it looks like the landing, this thing here, this landing is actually a part of the stair below. And this, that, that landing becomes the floor for this stair on level two, essentially. Because, oh, sorry, level three. Because see this stair starts at level three. So the, the bottom of the stair starts on level three. Well, then this one, that starts on level two and comes up to level three. So it comes up to level three generic. And the top of that landing is obviously the floor. Now, we do need to edit this because this landing now technically needs to come out more. So I'm going to try something here. I'm going to go edit stair. I'm going to click on this, which is clearly a landing. I can see that here, which is good. And I'm just going to go edit sketch. And you'll see everything now turns green. Now, this can be a little bit harder for those that aren't used to this, but I'm doing this in 3D because I reckon you'll find this is a bit easier. So in 3D, I'm going to go AL align. And I'm going to highlight the side of this wall. And then I'm going to click on this element. Now I'm going to highlight this wall and click on this green element. Okay. That's all I need to do because these two were the ones that moved. All right. Then I'm going to go green tick and I'm going to do something like this. Now you're going to notice there's some overlap here and that is fine because I'm going to go, okay. And now I'm going to have to move the CLT floor plate, which is a model group. Remember, so I'm going to, have to go edit. I have to click on this. Uh, and they've modeled these as individual panels, haven't they? They have indeed. So if I scroll under, I can see that's a panel, that's a panel, that's a panel, that's a panel. Now, let me tell you something for free. This would never be done. You would never model a floor like this. This is ridiculously slow and time consuming. I can see why they've done it for like lesson purposes for you guys to understand which way the panels go. But I can guarantee you 100%, you would never ever model it like this. You would just model it as one monolithic floor and then let the shop drawers, i.e. the actual CLT company, decide how to break these up. You shouldn't be dictating that as a building designer or as an architect. There's no skin in the game for you. There's no benefit for you to do it. It just becomes cumbersome and the responsibility is on them to decide what the cuts are that are most efficient. So with that little rant over, we're gonna to have to modify these, but the problem is you have to modify them one at a time, which is very annoying. So we have to go, I'm gonna go edit boundary and I'm just gonna drag this back to here and say, okay, and say, don't attach. No, I would not like to join. Now, the reason why you've got, so that might've been a little bit confusing. So when I click on this and I go edit boundary, notice how it's a rectangle, like so. But when I go like this, you'll notice there's like this little right angle that's happening. You know why, don't you? Because of the shaft, because the shaft tool is cutting that shape. So that's all right. I'm gonna do this panel now. I'm gonna double click on this panel. I'm gonna move this back to the wall face and go okay. And then it's going to say, would I like to attach the floors to the bottom of this, um, this uh, attach walls that go up to the bottom of this floor? I'm going to say, don't attach. And then this one here, I'm going to say, no. The truth is, I mean, I know what those things do. I don't know what they're doing in this scenario. And therefore, I'm not going to fight fire. I'm not, I'm not going to play with fire. I'm just going to leave it. Just say no. Now, everything I did there, I could do in plan. And in fact, I'll do it on the next level up in plan view so you can see it both ways. It becomes a lot easier to do it in 3D, in my opinion. You just have to be very careful about which surfaces of a model you're actually selecting. Now, I'm gonna go okay, all right? And then I'm gonna go HR to bring back those annoying shafts. So those shafts will reappear and I'm gonna be able to select it. There it is there. So there's the stair shaft. And if I go to like my top view, Notice now how the shaft is also not wide enough. So I'm gonna to have to go edit sketch and I'm gonna just drag these to be in line. Say okay. And notice now, I'm gonna hide the shaft again because it's already annoying me. HH. HH. Now notice how that yellow timber is going right up to the door, nice and clean. So this is already looking a heck of a lot better, heck of a lot cleaner. In fact, it's probably just cleaner by default than when we started.
Next is the actual stair itself. So we've made this landing bigger, but this this landing is referring to the landing on the level below, not to the stair that starts on level three, but on the stair that starts on level two and ends at level three. We want to edit this stair here, the stair that starts on level three, because that's the one we see in the level three generic floor plan. So I'm gonna go to here, my floor three, my level three generic floor plan. I'm gonna click on the stairs and we are going to do our best shot to edit the stair in as it currently sits. So this stair here I'm clicking on, this one here, the reason why this is all highlighting blue is because what you're actually looking at, very, very confusing because the stairs, this, you know, this Revit template file is not the greatest. The arrow is pointing down the stair when really it should be pointing up the stair, all right? It points up here because this stair here is now broken because it continues on to the next level. Whether this one here you're looking at is from level two up to level three and there's that landing that we edited before. All right, so now I'm going to, and just for the sake of clarity, I'm gonna temporarily hide that. So it looks like this. So now we're just editing this stair here, which goes up to level three. So watch what happens. I've selected the stair, I'm gonna say edit stairs, and all of a sudden they all show, because what we're seeing is the level above now. Okay, and you can see this landing here is, or is cooked again, it's cooked, because this is the one that's above your head. It's currently on level four. So let's stick with this to begin with, all right? So this stair here, we know it needs to go wider. So firstly, I'm just gonna use the move tool and I'm gonna go from here to here. Then we have to remember what these these grid, these um, reference planes are for. So there's 50 mil between your hand and the handrail and there's your handrail thickness. Then we have 1100 wide to this line here. Then we've got 50 mil and there's our wall. So you can see there's, there's 50 mil between the wall, there's the handrail, there's 1100 between your handrails, 50 mil for the handrail, 50 mil from the back of the handrail to the wall. That stair is now the correct width, width that is. The landings, I have no idea. We have not worked out the landings at all yet and I guarantee you they're probably not going to be right. Now, next stair. Next stair we need to edit as well. We know that this is actually starting on the right side because we're the wall here, 50 mil between the wall and the handrail. The handrail's 50 mil. Then we need 11, uh, sorry, 1050 between this handrail and that red line there. So we know that that has to go to there at least. Then 50 mil for the handrail, then 50 mil to the back of the wall. Okay, so now we know that's right. Now, this is looking a little bit strange because there's all sorts of weird things going on here. But that's because we've got the landing here. Remember, it's above your head. We have this landing here, which is the landing of the stair. All right. Now, next thing to do is let's play around with this landing. So I'm going to double click on the landing. We get those green lines and I'm going to use my line tool. I'm going to go this wall, that line. We're going to go this line, that line. So now we know that this is fine. I'm going to say, okay. Now I'm gonna do this landing, double click on it. And this is what I was doing in 3D before. So this wall, that line, this wall, that line, okay? There's some weird stuff happening here too, so let's clean that up. So it would be this line would be that line, and this line would be that line. So it looks something like that, all right? Let's go okay, and let's go okay again. All right, good success, nothing's broken so far. All right, so next up, we have to move this wall here that's in the middle of the shaft because we know it's not in the right place. So we have to click on the model group that we were working with before, which is, remember, be very clear, CLT shaft, stair uh, level two to level seven. We're currently on level three, so this is gonna affect all of those levels. I'm gonna go edit group. Ah, now, very, this is very interesting. I'm gonna go, now notice I'm in this group. I can click on these walls, look at the wall that I can't click on, this one here. So this this wall is sitting outside of this group. I'm gonna go, okay, where are you sitting? Ah, to no one. It's literally sitting in no man's land. So that's interesting. Let's click on this wall and let's just see where is it going from and where is it going to? So it's starting on level three and it's going up to level four. Very interesting. Why is it not a part of the group? I'm not sure, but that's okay. I'm gonna go from here, I'm gonna go move to like so, and there we go. That looks good. I'm gonna go HR to bring everything back. Now you're gonna notice something really strange here. This stair looks good. This stair, way too narrow. 
this stair here way too narrow because that's the level below, remember? Level below. So let's go back to 3D. All right. And that's looking a lot better, a lot better. Not perfect, but a lot better. Forget the handrails for now. Remember the handrails are separate. We'll deal with those in a second. Okay. So this looks a little bit strange. So this wall looks like it needs to be like further along this way, like so, but we'll look at that in floor plan. It also looks like this stair here. So we are currently where my cursor is. So where my mouse is right here, this is level um, three. Okay, don't be confused because remember the base constraints level two, it's going up to level three. So this is level three. This stair here needs to be set back one. Okay, so what it needs to do is if I bring this up again, currently this stair is like starting here on the landing when it needs to start back one distance or one landing length in order to get this handrail here to work properly. So we have to play around with that a little bit more, I think. Okay. Go back to level three. I am going to hide this stair. I'm going to click on this stair. Go edit stairs again. Now, just to help myself, I'm just going to... I'm going to quickly hide this landing. So, this landing at the moment is the landing at the top of the stair. I'm going to just hide that. Oh, I can't. It's a little bit frustrating. Okay, that's all right. But this is where we might run into a bit of trouble. Yeah, okay. So what happens then? Take this to there. Go back to three D. All right, so this is the stair in question. Right, so level one to level two, that stair. Level two to level three. Level three to level four is the stair we're currently working on. Now, I am going to just hide these two for the moment because this is the one that we're starting with. And it should be pretty obvious that that's the stair. So that's right, that comes up to here, then that wraps back around. And it comes up to here and it should wrap back around, but we're going to need more room here. That's definitely not wide enough, that landing. So let's go back and look at the width of or the length of the stair now, because I reckon we're going to find there's going to be some editing that's required there. All right. So let's use this as a reference again. Okay. So you have a 920 door. You're going to want at least what have we got there. Yeah, probably be close. It'd be the same width. You'd want at least the same width of the stair. So what is the total width of our stair? Let's take a look. So currently, from a wall to the wall, 1250. Okay, so 1250 is the number of the width of our stair. So we're going to need RP 1250. And we're going to need to do that from this side. So, which is not bad. We're actually under here. But this side, we're way too small. Like so. Now, this is going to be probably much more impactful. Much more impactful. 
because we can't just simply drag these walls out to the right. So there is a, there's where the stair needs to end and that's where the stair ends on this side, like so. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna highlight this one, hold down control, right click, overwrite graphics by element. Oh, I can't change them, that's okay. All right, so with that in mind, so I could just shift the stair the whole way to one side, but I don't think that's going to work. I don't think that is going to work at all. So, all right. What I'm going to do, go back to 3D. Let me go to here, unhide. Now, what I'm going to do, let's get a little bit controversial, but that's what we're going to have to do. All right, level one to level two. That is the first CLT stair. Therefore, delete. Level two to level three, delete. Level three is the stair you're working on, so leave it. Level four to level five stair, delete. And the handrails go with it. This way we're not getting confused. This is the stair that we're working with. Now this might get a little bit complex, but it's the only way to do this, okay? So, now, you've got the shaft opening. God, is that annoying. have got a handrail that's sitting there right now. Just for argument's sake, I'm going to click on the handrail. I'm just going to move this to the right place. Oh, I can't move pin element. Yeah, okay, that's all right. Uh, pick path. I'm going to... So, what I did there is I just clicked on the handrail and went pick path. Click on the handrail and I'm just going to go move. I'm going to move from here with the center. To there okay that will do for now we will fix it up later I just didn't want that um, handrail to be floating in the middle of the stair but what I think we need to do is we're gonna have to probably unfortunately draw this stair again I think I think unless we can move this back a little bit so we know that this hand we know that this line is there and we know that this line is there and we know that's the correct length of our stair so we think. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go move and I'm going to go from this side to the inside of the stair. And why have I done that? Because this is an absolute. This line cannot move. Okay, because we don't want this stair to move. So what we have to do is make this riser smaller. So I'm going to click on this model group, go edit group, and I'm going to go like this. All right, I've got a little warning there. And the warning is because this door is now not sitting center. So I'm going to do something like that and go, okay. There we go. All right. So now we've got to do quite a bit of editing again, but now we know the stair theoretically should be wide enough. Now, I think that there's going to be a bit of an impact here because this wall is also going to have to move like back here somewhere. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go RP. And we're going to go work back the other way. So we're going to go 50 mil from this wall here. Hit down space bar like so. 50 mil again. All right. And then I'm going to do it on the other side too, even though there's probably not going to be a handrail there. I'm going to go like that. And one more time. Like that. Now, it might be hard to see, but what we're done is you've got the back wall of your CLT, 50 mil between the handrail, 50 mil wide for your handrail. Now, in order to know where this wall should theoretically end, we need to do some more. So I'm gonna go another um, reference plane, 1050, and I'm gonna go from here to there, and then another 50 mil, there to there, and again, there to there. Now, this might be a little bit confusing for y'all. I'm going to drag this back like this. All right. Because what you're going to see is a handrail comes up to here. It wraps around the stair and then goes back up again. If I was to draw this with a line, it would look something like this. So it would go up. Whoops. Let me just do it again. Detail line. It's going to go up, around, and then around like that. Okay, something like that. That's what your handrail is going to do. So therefore, this wall here needs to come back to there. 
Okay, if I turn off my line weights, it will make it a little bit clearer. Okay, it's just hard at the moment because I keep selecting the damn shaft. All right. Now, we have to play around with the stair again, I think. Or maybe we just bring this back to like here because we don't know what that stair looks like yet. So I'm going to go click on the stair. I'm going to go edit stair. I can see my stair starts here. So that looks okay. And you know why it looks okay? Because notice this stair comes up to here, but then the next stair doesn't start to here. Then when you come up to here, this stair, it's hard to see through that line, but this stair, you'll see that line ends there and then it ends here. So your, your stairs are constantly staggered in a way. So that actually tells me stairs not too bad. Stair might be constructed right. The only thing I worry about though is that the stair is not starting and stopping. And it's definitely not stopping where it's meant to. The stair is meant to be starting, stopping all the way back here and it's definitely not. So let's click on the stair again and go edit stair. Yeah, okay. So it's doing the right thing, but it needs to come back. And so what has to happen is I need to go like this. This, I've selected both of them. Damn, it needs to come, theoretically, all the way back to there. Okay, something like that. Hmm, okay. So it says here, the stair runs and landing cannot be joined. So I'm gonna say unjoined. And the reason being is because this is now broken away. So I need to connect this to here. Need to connect that to there. And if I turn on my line weights, that's what I've done. So it looks like that. And I'm going to go dimension, 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 equal, delete that. Okay. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to go OK. All right. Now, this landing up here, I need to edit. So, I'm going to go double click. I'm going to play around with this landing. All right. So, I'm going to use my line tool, top of the stair to the edge of the landing. This back wall to that edge of the landing. That is still right. But this start of the stair to that part of the landing, delete the element. Then, I'm going to go trim. And I'm going to go one. No, I'm going to go like this. Oh, I get it. Okay. And then I'm going to need to draw like so. So something like that. Hmm. So, okay. Now, I'm not sure about this. I still don't think this is right. So, okay. Okay. Something like that. Now, this door is definitely going to have to move. That door is definitely not in the right place. But let's just take a look in 3D. All right. So, this to me already looks a lot better. Okay. So, what you're currently looking at, I'm going to keep hiding these, these uh, annoying shafts. All right. So, you've come up to... You've come up to level four. That's where my cursor is now. You walk up the stairs, you come up to the landing, you turn around, you've got a run, like you've got a stair run before you start climbing the stairs again, you get up to the top and then the same thing repeats. So that's not too bad, but this wall here is going to have to come back to, you know, at least to here. But again, it might actually have to be a little bit further, somewhere around there, but we'll work that out. Um, we'll work that out shortly. So we go back to my level three. Okay, now I need to play around with these, the shaft. I need to drag back to here because we've changed the width of that. So, okay, I need to click on these walls and I go edit group and I'm going to move this back. In fact, I'm going to use my line tool back to there. This wall will probably have to come out to here. In fact, I'm just going to use my line tool again. So the front of the stair with that wall. Okay, now the, this service cupboard is going to look a little bit skew iffy at the moment, but it doesn't really matter because, you know, you could use these pipes. You could like put some penetrations in there. Although that might not work because I think you need a certain amount of clearance latch side, don't you? Let's just double check. You will. 
you will. By the time this handrail comes up and goes around, you will. So we'll have to keep playing around with that. Okay, that's all right for now. This wall above, remember this wall is um, level four to level five. I'm gonna delete that because it's just too confusing. Even this one here, level two to level three, I'm gonna delete that because it is just confusing the hell out of me. So this landing up here is gonna to have to get wider still. So when I come to here, when I look at the distance between this wall and that wall, 1266, something's not right. I think I'm not measuring the right one. My bad, let me do that again. So it's from here to here, 1250, perfect. From here to here, 1250, perfect. From there to there, 1250, perfect. Now, I'm gonna have to do it on this side. I need to go from here to here is 1170. It needs to be 1250, which tells me this riser is about to get smaller again. And there's my riser, there's my shaft opening. So you can see how there's a bit of a game of Tetris here. Uh, it's it's frustrating, but there's no other way around it. But really, it's going to be from the top of the stair. So I'm going to have to go... Click on the stair. I'm going to say edit stair. And there, right there, is the top of my stair. So I'm going to use a reference plane like this. My, my. This stair's going to get a lot bigger. So there's the top of the stair right there. And now I'm going to have to do my 1200 from here. So I'm going to go um, CC across and there will be 1250. And my, look at this. That is where the stair right well is going to end. So I'll go OK. Uh, oh, that's annoying. So they, they've actually disappeared with the, um, when I click on the stair, I go edit stair. They'll come back, won't they? Yeah, okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on them and go control. Can I go control C? Selection cannot be copied. Ah, oh, okay, all right. Have it your way. I'll go delete, delete. Okay, now I just have to draw them myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna to go to level four, all right. Man, this is going to look so confusing for you guys. But because we've got no other stairs in here now, these are the only stairs we can see. Don't worry about it. I'm going to go RP for reference plane from the top of this stair, like so. Drag that up. And then I'm going to go click on this and go CC and then 1250. All right, there's the end of our stair. Then this reference plane. This reference plane. And that reference plane, move from there to there, delete that, okay? So what this means is this. So I'm gonna go double click on this wall. I'm gonna move to here, that wall. Now, again, it's giving me a warning because this door has now broken. You're not gonna fit a double cupboard, a double wall in there. Oh, sorry, double door. So. I'm gonna change this to a single door. I'll go like a 915, like so, and I'm just gonna move this like that. Now, good thing is, because these are all um, uh, groups, they'll all move together. I'm also going to delete this center wall, so it's just one big riser now. So I'm gonna go OK, and I'm gonna go back to my level three, and you can see that's now been updated, but we still got to update all the risers as well. So I'm still clicking on risers and all sorts of weird stuff going on in there. But next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this again, edit group, I'm gonna click on this door and I'm gonna move this door back again. So I'm gonna go AL to where the uh, handrail would be to the opening of the door, 
go like that. Now I've got plenty of clearance latch slide um, on that edge. It also means that this wall can now come to here. So now I think the stair is wide enough. I'll go back to my 3D. Yeah, that's that's looking a lot better in terms of stair width. It even just looks even just looks right now. That's looking a lot a lot better. With the stairs now done, let's take a look. Well, let's just double check that these stairs do work across multiple floors. So I think that the sectional view is probably a good one to work with. So we've got to edit the landing. So I'm just gonna double click on the stair. I'm doing this in 3D. Click on the landing, edit sketch, and I'll turn on my line weight so it's easy to see. Align, and I'm gonna hit tab until I get to this wall and then click on that line there. Now, if you're having trouble with that, don't, no stress, don't worry about it. Just um, do this in plan view, you know what I mean? So I've just been doing this in 3D, but you can always do it in plan view. Now you know how to do it from following along earlier. So I'll click okay, looks something like that. That's a bit better. I can see there's some weird stuff going on with like floors and walls in here. I think that's probably got to do with like the void thing again, but you know, we'll come back to that. The thing I'm concerned about the most is let's just see whether this works level to level. So I'm just gonna click on the stair. I'm gonna go control C. I am then gonna go escape. I'm gonna go paste and go align to selected levels. I can't do that. Oh no, align to selected levels. And let's go level four. Level four to level five, click okay. Yep, that's looking pretty good. That's looking, that's looking really good. There's one thing I'm going to do, which is I'm going to work on this notch here. So this is the top of the stair we've been working on. So I'm gonna click on this. I'm gonna go edit stairs, click on the landing. I'm gonna go edit sketch. And what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go trim here to here. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of that and get rid of that. That's because now I want the, I want this to start underneath of the stair. Hmm. I'm eyeballing that at the moment. I wonder if I can do this. AL. Hmm. There to there. There we go. And then go OK. All right, so it looks something like that now. And then go OK again. And that's what we've got. So it looks like that. That's probably more realistic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this one. I'm going to take this section box and move it up. Remember, delete that stair. Delete that stair. Delete the center of that and delete oh, that there. All right, I'm gonna take this stair, go to control C, and then I'm going to hit escape. I'm gonna come up to paste, line to select levels. I'm gonna go four and five. Yes, that looks good. Yeah, it's looking a lot better. And then this wall, I mean, this is a scenario where I might say, you know, this wall starts on level one, perhaps, all the way down here, and it goes up to like level eight. So essentially I go like up to the roof and it will do something like this. So see that wall now just continues the whole way up. And that's looking a lot, a lot better. Brilliant. Now. I'm gonna go control Z, control Z, control Z, control Z. Okay, I'm gonna leave it like this, all right? So now I'm just back to the stair. We've done what we need to do. Next up is the handrails. Then we'll copy this across all floors. But let's clean up this area a bit more because I can see there's something going on with this little junction here. So let's go back to our other 3D view, which is like this. And we have to play around again with these CLT floor plates. And that's why, that's that little junction there. So I'm gonna go edit group, click on this panel. Oh yeah, okay, so remember the panel is square. It's not the panel, it's the problem. Of course, it's the void. So I'm gonna go HR to bring back all the voids. There's the void there, edit sketch. Now you could do this in plan view. I'm doing this in 3D. I'm gonna go AL, 
there's the wall, there's the void. I'm gonna go to my top view and I need to move this one around as well. So I'm gonna go here, I'm just gonna click and drag like so. And that's looking much better. I just wanna make sure that I've got all these right. Yeah, okay, so it's not, yeah. So the plasterboard's important. So I'm gonna drag that back to there. Plasterboard is a finish on top of the CLT. That's why sometimes having the line weights turned on is not helpful. So you can see this is following, that path is following outside the, the um, plasterboard. So, okay. Although I got a feeling this is gonna do something. Let's take a look. So I'll go back to my 3D. Yes, that looks a lot better. Yep, junction's looking a heck of a lot better now. Excellent. Okay, I think we're getting close. Now, hmm, these junctures here are a little bit odd. What should be happening is that these floors should be coming up to here. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to edit group. Click on this floor. Oh, this is going to be such a pain because they're all individual panels. They should be something like something like that, and then editing these. Um, then what you do is you edit these walls. The walls sit on top and um, just underneath. But there's all sorts of issues here because they've included the plasterboard as part of the wall type and as part of the floor and ceiling type. It's hard to tell from here, but you've got like you've got a tile finish there. Then you've got like a screed, which is the gray stuff. Then you've got like a plaster, fire resistant plasterboard. Then the CLT layers, then another layer of plasterboard, then a very small like ceiling cavity space, then another layer of plasterboard there. It's, it's not the greatest, the way this has been modeled. I'm just going to go back a few steps just because that's, you know, I don't want you guys to do this. This is about the stairs. That's what I care about the most is the stairs. The rest of these junctures, they would have to be finessed and fixed. But, you know, if we have to, we can do this at a later, a later stage. Right now, I don't think it's worth it. I really don't. I think it would cause a lot of problems for you all. Um, so we'll just stick with the, with the stairs. All right. Now... Next thing to look at is the handrails. And I don't think the handrails are that bad in this model. So if I click on this handrail here, now granted that is definitely not starting and ending where it should. But the first thing I wanna look at is the type of handrail. So the best way to select it is just to hold my mouse over it and hit tab and click, okay? Now you can hit multiple parts of the handrail if you want. So when I just hit tab, I'm selecting the whole handrail. But if I hit tab again, I can just select, I can just select parts of it. like just the handrail itself or just the brackets. Okay, they are currently pinned. So it's gonna be pretty limited what I can do. And I keep selecting the shaft opening and it is absolutely killing me. So I'm gonna turn that off. And I'm gonna go like that. Okay, and these items are pinned at the moment. So the pin uh, locks me into a, a few options, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is just click on the handrail. Let's look at the other types in here. So they've got railing 50 mil pipe wall mounted, not bad. 50 mil pipe metal wall mount with vert at the end. Okay, yeah, I get that, that's fair. Then there's this one, metal vertical balustrade 125 mil. Yeah, that's not bad either, though you got nothing at the end of this handrail. It's a little bit strange. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build this handrail from, from the start. So I'm gonna to delete it. And I'm going to delete the one on the other side. Now, the reason why what you're seeing is those, is those dots is because of the section cut. If I bring it back just a little bit, you can see the handrail there and then there's the wall. So, yep. So, okay. I'm going to delete this one as well. And we're going to go back to our generic level. All right. So, we've got, we've got all this here, which is definitely helpful in terms of um, uh, our guidelines. The other thing I think is going to have to happen is, you know, the handrail has to come down to here because your handrail has to start one tread at least before the start of your uh, stair. So I get the feeling that this wall is going to end up needing to move to back here. But we'll wait and see. What's the current stair tread? 280, 280, yeah. Or splay to splay, 280. Or 
depth display will be, let's see, step display 300. Yeah, okay, these stairs are probably longer than they need to be. This staircase, this is probably not the most condensed staircase. You know, you could have like a 250 going um, rather than a 280 or 300 depth display. But at the same time, I'm probably not against this. I mean, this is probably a wise idea to give yourself some, some wiggle room. Okay, so. Let's just quickly, while we're here, let's play with these shaft openings. So I'm going to go edit sketch. I'm going to get rid of this opening and I'm just going to bring this back to here. It's going to be a bit easier. And there's going to be some other shaft openings somewhere else, I'm sure. Where are the other ones? Now that I want to get them in 2D, I can't. Oh, well, we'll get them in 3D shortly. Okay, so handrail. Let's go architecture, or actually click on the stair. Uh, no, that's okay, we go hand, uh, architecture, railing, place on a stair or a ramp or sketch the path. Now there's two different ways. Let's play with just place on the stair and see what happens, all right? So we've got the treads or the string out. We're gonna place on the treads. We're gonna use the same one, the wall mounted pipe for now. I'm just gonna click on this stair here. Oh boy, that definitely didn't work. Let's go back to 3D. Okay. Yeah, okay, so it worked on the, to be honest, that's not too bad. So it's done on the inside and the outside. It's not perfect, but it's not shocking either. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's go to this. This one's a bit easier to navigate around. Now, this is where it's cooked itself. So it's come up to the next level and it thinks that that's the end because this is the landing. It thinks that's the end of the stair. Uh, yeah, okay. So what I'm going to do is to make this... No, I'm going to leave that as is. What we're going to do now is we're going to play around with the um, path, okay? So I'm going to click on pick, um, edit sketch, okay? Edit the path. And I'm going to click on, you know what? It's going to be easy if I do this in 3D. So I'm going to, uh, sorry, in 2D. So I'm going to click on the handrail. I'm going to go edit path. And I'm going to go to my floor plan. And you're going to see something like this. And if I turn on my line weights, there's a whole lot of random stuff going on in here. So if you follow this, there's one handrail, it goes on an angle, then it's flat, then it's flat, then it's flat, then it's angled, then it's flat, then it's flat, then it's flat, then it's flat. Now, very clearly, we don't need these two. There's something weird going on. So we're gonna click on that one, delete. Click on this one, delete, all right? Now here, it's trying to join itself together. So on the inside, it's going up, around, up, and then around. Let's forget about the center one for a second. Let's focus on this one on the outside. All right. Now, go OK. Railing must be a single continuous sketch. If you want to break pieces of the railing into two separate railings. OK. So what it's saying then, what I think is, we're going to have to delete this middle railing because it needs to be one continuous rail. So we'll go delete and we'll say OK. And that's now going to work. So we're now just doing the outside rail to begin with. Now. Notice that the rail currently, see this here, it's sitting right on the edge of the stair. All right, now there's a few things you can do here. You can change the offset. So we can say the offset is like, uh, I don't know, 100 mil. You can see now it comes back inwards like so. That's one way to do it. The other way to do it is through clicking on the handrail itself and going edit path and then moving the path. So if I move the path like this, it will do the same thing. All right, so what I'd suggest that you do is we're going to change the offset from the path to zero in the properties, okay? I'm gonna go okay. And now you'll notice the center line of the handrail is in the wall. It's half in the wall, it's half outside the wall. All right, so now, and if you did a uh, offset of 50 mil, it's not gonna work, still not gonna work. So what I'd be doing is clicking on the actual, clicking on these lines and moving them in 50 mil. That's probably, it, in my opinion, it's probably the better approach. Let's just see whether this works first, okay? So I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna go inwards 50 mil. Let me do that again. Inwards 
50 and go OK. Now, that's still not going to work, is it? No, it's not. OK. Now, you know what? I'm probably over confusing it right now. I'm just going to revert back. So what we're going to do is we're going to go from the center line to here is 50. And I'm going to go 50. And I need to go 75, I think, actually, because it's half the pipe. There we go. That's it. If I told you that from the start, that'd be a bit easier. Notice now how the handrail, this blue highlight, is following in between the two reference planes. Okay. And the reason why it's 75 is because remember the, the middle line of the handrail is the reference point. So there's an invisible dashed line in the middle of, this, in the, of the handrail. That's, uh, that's um, the halfway point. That's why the offset's 75 mil, not 50. That's looking a lot better. Now, the handrail won't come up to the top here, uh, to the top of the landing. We're just going to terminate it at the top of the step. So we know that this, this line here is called top of step. All right, so I'm going to click on the handrail again and I'm going to go edit path. And what I'm going to do is see this here. I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to make this 300. Oh no, I'm not going to do that. That's a bad idea. I'm going to draw this back until I get to 300. Okay, then I'm going to delete this line. So you have angle, flat, 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 angle, flat for 300, done. All right, now I need to be, I need to bring this down a little bit more as well, but let's work on that in a sec. I'm going to say, okay, let's go back to our 3D. That's looking a lot better already. That's looking way more compliant. All right. So it wraps around, comes up the stair. Up to here. 300, terminate. Now, I think this could probably come in a little bit more. And you know why that is, is because it's this hockey stick at the end. This hockey stick's adding a little bit more distance as well. Same down here. So next up, we have to look at this thing in section. I think we have to look at this properly in section. So let's go to, which way are our sections going? Yeah, okay, so there's one here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be a bit cheeky. I'm just going to drag this bad boy like that. So it's going halfway through this step and then I'm going to double click on it. And then there's the stair we've been working on. There's the handrail we've been working on. So we need this handrail to do something like this. We need it to come down a little bit more, another length, and then come out flat. Like so. We might be in trouble with the door here too. But let's just see. This is in line. Yep, that looks good. All right. Not too bad so far. What's the height though from the top of the handrail? Oh, nice. Thousand. Fantastic. That's really good. All right. These stairs weren't too bad in terms of the types of families that they're using. So the good thing is you'll be able to copy this to future projects, which is really good. Now, I just want to verify something. I'm pretty sure at the top of the step. Yeah, okay. So, top of the step, you go... It's 250, then 300, and then you can terminate, essentially. It's at the bottom of the stair where you've got to go one more going, then 300, then terminate. All right. So, let's go back to here. Let's go edit path. And you got this line here. I am going to extend this line down to there because that is one more going. At least it should be. I'll just double check. Yep, it is. Okay, that's a good thing with this reference plane. Then I'm going to go, well, you know what? Let's just try this. I'm going to say, okay. I'm going to go back to my 3D. Yeah, okay. Then it needs to come out and then wrap around. Or we can make it go back into the wall, which is what we might do. We might do that. We might make it terminate back into the wall. We'll see if we can do that. Because I do think that's probably a better version than the hockey stick, at least in this scenario. Yep, 
good thing is once we do this once, we just have to copy it up. The in the inside one might be a little bit more tricky though, because we need that to basically seamlessly wrap and wrap and wrap around the building again and again. Okay, so back to level three. There's that. And then I'm gonna go edit path. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a straight line. So I'm gonna go click on a line and I'm just gonna go from here, make that 300 and then go okay. Now it looks like nothing's happened. Let's go back to the section box and you'll see now we've got down, we went down and now across 300, then the hockey stick begins. Now that's, that is technically, that is compliant, but let's now play around with this railing. This is where it gets real tricky because we're gonna play with the actual railing family. So I'm gonna go edit type, okay? So there's the family itself. There's the railing family. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna go duplicate and it says metal wall mount two. Uh, I'm just gonna go metal wall mount um, We go dash wall terminate and say okay. Right now, I have to remember how to do this. It's been a long time since I've done this. There's nothing in there. That's the baluster, it's a bracket. Okay, so it says here rail end curve start, rail end curve. End. So the rail end is that. So let's see. That's interesting. That they've got that there. All right. Okay, let's try this. Let's say none and none. I have no idea if this is going to work or not. Apply. Okay, so there goes the two hockey sticks. Let's say okay. And it says align joins, tandem joins. Now, extend rails to meet. I think that's okay. No connector. Weld, trim, yep. Type is circular, so it's a circular handrail. Let's click on this. The default radius is join. The radius fillet is 30. Profile, transitions are simple. Okay, the extension is floor plus tread depth. So you can set that up so it is plus tread depth and the extension by default, but don't worry about it. We've done that. The extension style, all right, is going to be wall and the bottom termination. Oh. Mm, okay. Let's just see how this works, okay? So we've just changed this to extension style as wall. I'll say okay. I'll say okay. All right. Then we've got that like that. All right, so that's already looking a lot better. I'm going to go edit path because I'm not convinced. Is that 300? Uh, it is 300. All right. So, okay. We want that. To, now, theoretically, it doesn't need to terminate back into the wall, but it'd be nice if it did. Tangent joints, angle joints, no connector, weld, trim, nah, it'd be weld. Height's 975, which makes sense because remember it's the center line. The rail type is that, but then I still think the extension style is wall. The terminations is what we're after. I'm trying to work out why we can't just get the terminate into wall. That's the profile. The transition is simple. Default join is a fillet. Hmm. Okay, I got another idea. What we can do is go edit path. I'm gonna go back to my level three plan and I'm gonna do this. Hmm. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. Let's just try this. I'm gonna go from here and I'm gonna draw back into the wall, 50 mil. Let's just see what happens here. I just wanna experiment. And I think that might've worked and that has worked, except 
it needs to be less. So I'm going to go edit rail. Oh, no, I'm not. I'm going to go click on this. I'm going to say edit path. And I'm going to change the length of that to 25. Say OK. There we go. Now, that's fine. In fact, that's probably a much easier way to do it. Oh, no. Something else has happened. Hmm. Okay. Let me get out of there. You can see what's happened here. See how this, that's a gooseneck. What needs to happen here is this needs to continue. Edit path. That needs to come back to there. That needs to go on one more step. There we go. That's better. All right. That's fine. No need to panic. Now this one, I'm going to go edit path again. I'm going to add a line and I'm going to go inwards 25 mil. So, okay. That looks much better. Now this end, I need to do the same thing. I need to terminate this back into the wall. So we're going to go back to level three. Oh, you know what? I'm going to keep working on this. This needs to go back to there. There we go. Now this side. It's a little bit concerning because this is not going to currently work. We cannot have that in front of the door. This, this door needs to go back further, but that means we're going to make this stair even bigger and crush uh, this, this riser even more. Now, look, the alternative is making these stairs smaller, but I really don't want to do that because that's going to basically mean we have to start again in terms of um, splaying out these stairs from left to right. That is going to be a real hassle, real hassle. So I'm going to leave this as is, and we're just going to move this door. I'm going to make this riser smaller, and the engineers are just going to have to deal with it. They're going to hate us, but that's okay. Now, before we do that, let's just quickly work on the inside rail and see if we make that work, all right? So we've got this rail type, which is our wall metal, uh, metal wall mount wall terminate. Let's do this again, and I'm going to go architecture, railing, place on stair. There's our stair. Now the same thing's going to happen. If I go back to here, we're going to have duplicate handrails because we've got one on the outside and then this new one that, back to where we were because you can't place it on one or the other, like one side of the stair or the other. So we're going to click here. I'm going to go edit path. I'm going to go back to our floor plan. And this time, turn on my line weights. We're going to delete these ones on the outside. Okay, so I'm going to go from here. Go delete, 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 delete and delete. So it's just the inside rail. All right. Now I have no idea what this is going to do. So let's just start with this. All right. Go okay. The first thing to do is click on this and the offset from the path is going to be 75 again. All right. So now this is already looking better. Notice this handrail again following the, re the reference planes. Now something funky is happening when we get up here, but that's okay. We can work that out. Let's just take a quick look in 3D. Yeah, there's something very strange happening there, but that's okay. The important thing is so far, this bit on the inside, oh, perfect. These brackets we need to fix up, but we can fix that up in a bit. But look at that. The join to the wall is absolutely schmick. Yeah, no problem at all. Hmm. Okay, so we'll go edit path. And then I'm going to go back to here. And this is where things are getting a little bit weird because this comes up and around and loops, but I can't work out where that path is. So go edit path, level three. And there's like something happening where it wraps around. So I'm just going to go delete. Ah, I see. There's like two overlapping. So see that, that, that line there. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go delete. And I can see now this is just one consistent line back to here. So I'm going to go OK again, go back to my 3D. And that's looking better, much better. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to change this to my wall terminate. So it looks something like this for now. All right, not bad. Now over here, this is that whole gooseneck thing. All right, so see what I need to do is flick this around. So what it's done is it's goosenecked again. So I'm going to cut this the other side. 
And notice how this is what a gooseneck is. So it comes around flat and it goes woo up and over. But what we want to do, double click on it. And what we need to do is actually extend this. So I'm going to drag this back to be like, mm, how long is the stair again? 180. So I'm just going to do something like this. Uh, what is that length currently? Actually, that's probably a more appropriate idea. I need to go to my floor plan. What is that current length? Two eighty. Okay, so we need to bring it back a hundred at least. So I go to like a hundred. And then this comes back to here, like so, and then okay. Mm, I still think that's goosenecking, isn't it? Yeah, okay, that's all right, that's all right, it is. So you know what we do? Come back even further. We need to go to a section. That's what we need to do. Level three, but the section is going to have to be, oh yeah, no, it's there. that's okay. But I'm gonna bring this section line now back to here and go double click. And there's the stair in question, okay? So what we need to work out is this line here is another 180, so to there. So really, this just needs to keep coming down till it meets this point. Because you don't want it to gooseneck. You want that to be a thousand. So that this rail here is definitely at the right height. This just needs to come down to meet there. So go back to here, level three. Click on that handrail, double click. What happens if I get rid of this and I just do this? Yeah, I think that I think that's worked. Yes, it has. There we go. So I've deleted that middle part, no straight line. It goes up, around, and up again. And that looks way better. What happens when I do this? Okay, I need to edit this landing a bit. Edit sketch. better. So that's looking a lot better around here now. Again, ignore those brackets. And then here, I'm just going to go back to zero and I'm just going to take this all the way up to level eight like that, because I need to see how this is going to wrap around the stair again. So still a fair bit of work to do here. So this comes down, this needs to extend. Another treads worth. And then it's going to wrap around. So we'll say, okay, like that. And then it's going to wrap around. So I'm gonna go back to level three, edit sketch like this. And I'm just gonna grab a straight line. And I'm gonna do this. I have no idea what's gonna happen here. Go back to here. Okay, so it's done that up there. See how that's come around? What I need to do is I need to find a way to fill it because that's gonna to have to be copied. So watch what happens, right? So if I go, uh, let's just say I take the whole stair and I go copy, and then I go paste to the next level up, which is level four, see that? So this needs to just close up here and then we're done. Then we're actually pretty much done. This is going to be the hardest joint though, I promise you this is gonna be so difficult. So I'm gonna go back one, I'm going to click on this pipe, go edit, and then I'm going to go back to my generic plan. 
because I've got this here. I actually need to do something like this. I don't know if this is going to work though. Highlighted laps over. You cannot close it. Yeah, okay. I didn't think that was going to work. Then. Hmm. That's going to be a little bit challenging. How do I get these two? To close up. Could do like a handrail terminal. No, that won't work. So what we've been able to do, all right, so a little bit confusing, but this is probably the best way to make it work without drawing the railing again. So I'm going to go up to level four. So I'm one level above. See this here? I've drawn this little handrail that's just a flat handrail. So what I did there, I'll just hide that quickly. I went up to architecture, railing, sketch the path, the rail, and now I've just got my standard wall mount rail. I'm going to go from the middle of this rail up to about, well, it's 50. So I'm going to go up to 75 and then from there across to there and that's it. And you can see how it's drawing. It's showing me if I've got the preview turned on, it's showing me what that looks, looks like. I say, okay, but importantly, I want to make sure it's very important. You do this, you offset it 50 mil. So it comes up 50 millimeters. All right. And when you do that, when you go to the 3d, you end up with something that looks like this. So see it comes up, terminates, goes around, and it's ready to join the next handrail when it climbs up to the next one. And I'll show you that. So I'll go like this, I'll go to control C, paste level four, say okay. Now notice straight away, look at that. Beautiful, joins up perfectly, completely seamless. This is always a trouble, trouble spot in Revit and something like this is not unusual. There's always multitudes of different ways to do the same thing. As you're learning in my other class, there's about three different, you know, three different commands to, to do the same command essentially. All right, so I'm going to go control Z. So I've got this, so this staircase is, it's almost finished. Now, the last thing is what to do with this termination down here. Now, I am a little bit confused whether down here, this needs to go down one tread and then it needs to extend 300, whether it just needs to go down one tread and then terminate because the exit is not over here. The exit's to the right or to the, to the left, whichever way you come in. So I'm not sure. So if for instance, in your class, you're told that it has to come down three, it has to come down one tread, then extend for 300, then terminate to the wall, well then clearly you're going to have to edit these model walls and push them back so you get that clearance. So you push this door back, this cupboard's going to pretty much go and the rise is going to shrink dramatically. However, if we can, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to sketch path. This is a 300 um, a straight component. I'm just going to turn this into something that looks like this. And make that like that. So, okay. And now you can see what it's doing. So it's going down one tread step and then terminating into the wall. 
all right what that means is we still have to edit these walls so i'm still going to do something like this Okay, but that might work. Although I'm convinced that this is not right. You're gonna need more latch side clearance. I'm pretty sure you need more latch side clearance. And if that's the case, you're still gonna have to push this wall and this door, essentially, something like that to get your latch side clearance over here. Now, I don't know whether that's the case. I'm pretty sure you need about 300 mil between there. That's gonna be a conversation you have to have with um, your teacher. But if that's the case, you just delete that. That becomes a riser, that becomes a riser. Okay, so it doesn't become a cupboard, that becomes a service riser, that's a service riser, and then you get the length that you need. But it does mean that your landing becomes much bigger on this side, which I'm not sure whether that really needs to be the case. So, okay, I'm gonna leave it like this, even though that potentially is incorrect. I'm just gonna play around with this path a little bit more. All right, so it looks something like that. And we are, we're almost done, almost done. So I've got my CLT floors, edit group, click on this. Oh, that's okay, there's something, that's all right. Yeah, I think it's the right, it's the uh, voids that we're playing with again. Go back to 3D. So that void, ah yes, okay, so edit sketch. This void needs to be fixed up, okay. There we go, that's better. Like I said, if you need to extend this 300 again, you know how to do that now. You edit the sketch extend that straight line out 300, then terminate back into the wall. But as a consequence, all of these have to move with it. All right, now, really, there's just a few more things to do. Really, it's just, um, where we go, back to here. Now we need TGSIs on the stairs. Now I think it only needs to be at the top and the bottom of the stair, but we'll have to play around with that. I'll show you how to do it anyway. So you know where to put them, wherever they need to go. You can put them wherever they need, wherever they need to. The process is the same. They're all the same family. All right, so now I'm gonna go back to my stair that looks like this. Drag that back. That's the living room or the bedrooms. All right, now from this is down here, this is a little bit of a different scenario. So we're currently on Level one, that's level one, the podium, which means that further down here, that's the ground floor down here. So you see the stairs are different here and you'll notice they're gonna be dramatically different to how the staircase is further up. Okay, this back wall is gonna be in the same place, but this wall, remember this is a different model group, yeah? If I drag this up, look at that crushing it's it's already clashing with the stairs so you can tell what we've done we've cleaned up levels two to seven but levels one and um so the basement the ground floor and level one those walls have not moved we've only done two to seven all right and that's what I'm gonna teach you in this tutorial. Your job is to use that same method on level one, sorry, on level, yes, level one, the ground and the basement. Tip for you, remember, it's going to be this wall here that moves out and this wall here that moves to the left. This wall here and this wall here are staying where they are, okay? Now, go back to here, grab this stair, grab this little duvalaki, okay, those two, and I'm gonna go Control C, and I'm gonna go Paste, Align to Selected Levels, and let's just try from four to the roof. Say so, okay, give it a second, and look at that. That is looking absolutely schmick. That is perfection. Move that back so I cut through. Yeah, that's looking, 
the joins are looking really good. Now, this thing here with the brackets is a bit of a pain. Now, I don't believe that it's, uh, in fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna experiment. I'm gonna control Z, I'll go back, so I've just got this one. Let's just fix these brackets here because they are really annoying me. So I turn off my line weights, click on this bracket here or click on this here. I'm gonna hit tab on my keyboard, okay? And I'm gonna go, can I uh, select that one individually? Doesn't look like it. Should be able to unpin it. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. All right, this one. It's not even pinned. All right. What normally happens, I'm able to um, hold my mouse over this, hit tab, and I should be able to select just the brackets, but I can't. That's okay. Let's just play around with this, um, this, this um, railing family again. I'm going to go edit type. Drag this out. And let's just go, so that's the type of rail. Hmm. Oh, okay, go out. We'll go into baluster placement. So the balusters are these brackets here. So I can see the top offset. Well, it's this one here actually. So see here, this is what's highlighting here. The base offset zero, top element is the rail, top offset's one millimeter, distance to previous is 600. All right, so it says here, break the pattern at segment end or at angles greater than or never. Okay, justify from the beginning, excess length is zero. So we could play around with this and say, well, instead of every 600, let's make it every uh, 900. Say apply and watch what happens here. See now you're getting them a lot less, but notice what's happening. It's repeating it every time the segment breaks. That's why you're getting these weird things where you're getting like doubles. So you know what? The 600 is probably appropriate spacing, but it's this thing here where it's like where the segment ends and where it begins again, it tries to break. Hmm. Let's try this again. We'll go to balusters. And let's see if we can do this. So um, break pattern never, and let's see what happens. So okay, and okay. Yeah, that's making a lot more sense now. You can clearly see these are spaced apart a lot better, but you're still getting really weird scenarios. What was if I unpin this? So I'm going to unpin this rail. Oh, that's definitely not it. Look what happened there. I think the reason why that was the case is it was like saying it's pinned to the... Um, to the host, which is the stair, which is why it was on an angle. So when you took that away, it was like, whoa, what are you doing to me? All right. Hmm. This used to be so easy. You used to just be able to pick on these and delete them. There's gotta be something else. Edit path. No, that's not it. I can't pick those things, so it's definitely not it. It's got to be a setting in the family. The base is the host, the top rail element, baluster placement. That's the bracket. No problems. Offset. That's fine. So angles greater than each segment. We'll change that back to each segment. Justify the beginning end. Spread to fit pattern. Let's just try that. Let's just say it was beginning. So we'll say spread to fit pattern. And then we'll say okay. And then okay. That's much better. That's a lot better. It's not perfect, but it's probably the closest we've gotten so far. We still have these rogue ones like over here that we need to rotate. So the reason why we can't grab these is because of the way the rail's set up. So the rail's set up with these, bal with these brackets as balusters, which makes it very hard. In fact, you can't edit them you can't grab them here i think for now for the sake of this exercise i'm going to leave this if we have to we can always make a new rail family later and set it up so you can move it 
but I probably wouldn't now. I mean, this is going to take a while just to get to this point. Th to be honest with you, if you're at this point and we need to change the baluster or the handrail family later, that's probably the easy part. The, the hard bit is this component up until now. So let's just stick with what we're doing. So I'm just going to continue this section up the building, this 3D section. And I'm going to get to here. I'm going to delete that family. This is the last, oh, I get what they've done here. They've, they've angled this here for the last um, stair to the roof. Um, so if you know what I mean, so that follows. In fact, if I just go back one, you'll see there's the stair, there's the old stair. And then this acts as like a baluster that comes up. Uh, we're not going to do that. I'm just going to delete the stair. I'm going to delete this. This is going to go all the way to the underside of the roof because that's how it should be. It'll be a part of a structure element. There's the top of the stairwell, staircase. Okay, that looks fine. And we're just gonna go from here. I'm gonna grab this little boy. And I'm gonna go Control C, align to selected levels four to eight, I think it will be, and go okay. Give it a sec and look at that. That is perfection. That's great. Yeah, okay, so we don't need that last one. So we're gonna go delete, delete, and now we're at the top of the stair, okay? Now at the top of the stair there, well, it depends on where the, um, on level eight, where the stair coming out of the shaft is. I guess it's probably back towards where the other ones are, in which case the easy thing to do is just to draw a wall that closes off this area up here. So you might edit this, because these are still individual stairs, now that you've done it for one, you don't have to do them for all. So you can always say like, for instance, I'll edit this stair, I'll click on this uh, landing and I'll go edit the sketch. And I might say, well, there's no more stair. So I'm just gonna close that off, delete that, do something that looks like this. Okay, so it looks like that. And then I just draw a wall that goes along here out to the um, emergency exit. I mean, I'll just show you quickly what that looks like. Go, okay, I'll take this wall. I'll do something similar, except this time it starts on the roof and it goes up to level nine. And I'll do something that looks like something looks like that. And then I go back to my copy and you can see what that looks like. It's not perfect, but you're getting the idea. Yeah. So that comes down to there. And then that is how you get out of the fire stair. So we're not like falling over rather than doing like a balustrade over here, which doesn't quite make sense. So I'll get rid of that little family there. And in fact, that is going to come back to there. That's going to be offset 50 mil. So something Something like that. I don't know whether that's perf if that's exactly right or not, but you get the idea. Come up, come up around the stairs, and then out the their fire escape. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now we still need to do it between. Uh, I don't know whether it will work. I'm going to go Control C, and I'm going to click on this one as well. That little thing, Control C. I'm going to go align to certain levels, and let's try at level two. Yeah, nice, that's worked. All right, so down to level one. So really it's now from level one to level two. We haven't got a stair yet because that's a slightly higher floor to floor. So we'd need to work on that one. But you got the gist now, you know how to do it. You've done it for all of the other ones. So we now have fully compliant fire stairs compared to what we did before. The last thing is around TGSIs. So I'm gonna go down to the ground floor for this. Now, again, this is definitely not right. These stairs are too narrow. In fact, you can see there's our new stairwell. Those those detail, or those um, reference planes are the new stairwell. So you can use those as a bit of a guide for you to drag these out. These So these walls will, you know, they'll come out to like there eventually. That's what will eventually happen. But TGSIs, you can get those families online. Um, there's many different places you can get them. And I'm just trying to think, mm, let's see. If I go insert load or this family, let's see if this works. TGSI. I don't know if they're going to have it. No, that's okay. That's all right. Um, all right. Let's see if I can find one online. Just give me a sec. 
All right, so I've gone to bimcontent.com and just typed in tack or tactile and we can download either the single plate of tactiles or you can download, I think that would be, uh, what would that be? Uh, usually they're 150 or 300, 369, 1200 wide, really depends. Uh, it's up to you which ones you want to download. They also have the directional ones. These are the ones you commonly see at train stations and whatnot. So I'm just going to download these and I'll install them. I think I'll have to log in. So just give me one minute and I'll do that now. Okay, so I've downloaded these in Revit 2024 families, both this single and the stacker four. Let's go into Revit and open those up now. So I'm going to go to my downloads. There's the two tactile indicators. And I am just going to clean up my model family. So I'm going to go close all files. And as always, I should practice what I preach. I'm just in a blank, that blank file is in earlier on. And uh, let's grab those two files and just drag them in. Okay, so they're in here now. So we don't see them, but I'm going to go CM on my keyboard. Okay, CM is the, um, the, the system that you would use to uh, bring up your component, or I'll give you another example. You're going to go component, place component, and then you can see because they're the last ones we loaded in, there's the single tactiles, there's the modular tactiles. So I'm going to use the yellow ones, and I'm just going to go place on face, and I'm going to go from here. And you can see that what's really good is as I draw, more become available. So this is awesome. If I'm doing like a train station or a level crossing or something like that, I can go like that and it gives me all my tactile indicators. And if I go to my 3D, I'm sure I'll see them. There they are down there in yellow. I wonder if they update with the color. Let's go like blue. Yeah, nice. They actually do. They change color, the family. So that, that's actually, they're really good families. I imagine that they'll probably change if I go to like, See when I go to court, like I go to um, medium mode, if I go to coarse mode, the little tactile buttons disappear. And then I turn on fine mode, they reappear, which is really good because depending on the drawing, sometimes you don't want to see all that information. So I'm going to go back to my actual project now. Um, so here's my actual project and I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to go to here, drag them in. All right, so it looks like nothing's happened. I'm gonna go CM on my keyboard. I'm gonna grab the yellow ones again, and I'm just gonna draw from say here. Have to do one more to there, and then just move them into place. Now, of course, these stairs are not wide enough, so they're not in the right spot, but you know the drift, you know they need to be 300, or sorry, one tread depth away, and then these are 300, so give or take gonna be something like that would be what would that be 280 like so they'd be in the right spot because we can see here 300 is the tread depth oh no sorry that's right it's 300 from the bottom tread my bad so from here to here 300 that's now a compliant stair well the tactiles are and then you would do the same on the other levels. Now check with the compliance with your compliance teacher. I'm pretty sure you don't need these at every level. I can't see why you would. It's usually at the beginning and the uh, the beginning or towards a, an a external exit where you're going to need those tactile ground indicators. And again, remember if I turn that into like course mode, which I can do when I override enable visibility template. See, they just turn into just just squares which is very helpful from a modeling perspective. Otherwise, you know, that can get quite messy if you're printing it like that. Okay, so I think that is pretty much, that's it. A couple of hours worth of work and we've been able to get our stairs fully compliant on levels two to seven. So it's the same methodology of moving the walls, moving the stairs, modularizing them. Now on the basement to level one and, uh, sorry, basement to ground, and ground to level one, it's probably a little bit easier in that the stairs are slightly different, but you only have to do it once. You don't have to try and get it to repeat the whole way through. So that part should be a little bit easier. And I think this has gone a long way to sort of working out you know, what this process looks like. So there we are, compliance stairs from levels two to seven, or at least the progress or process of how you would go about progressing to make those stairs compliant. What's left for you to do is basement to level to ground, and ground to level one. 
Make no mistake, that is extremely difficult to do. It's not uncommon if you're working at a big firm, generally there's one or two people in the entire organization whose job it is to just do stairs all day, every day. It's a very finicky task with a lot of very complicated tools that aren't exactly logical in Revit. Uh, and particularly, you're trying to take something that someone else has modeled and make it compliant rather than just starting from scratch yourself and making it compliant from the beginning. There's an added challenge into that. There's also the families that we didn't create from the start. We're sort of utilizing families that have already been created. But nonetheless, just be patient with yourself and take your time. That is a substantial amount of work across a very large amount of uh, building space across multiple floors. So again, be patient with yourself. Just take your time with it. Stop, pause, go back. I think this is around about a two hour sort of tutorial. Chances are it will take you at least double that um, by the time you get through it. And even then you may still have questions. And if that's the case, bring them to my class and we'll work through them with you. So best of luck with it.